Monday morning and you've been assigned to review a PR. It's 9 a.m. You're not worried. It's gotta be a simple one, a one-liner, right? Oh my God, bro. Oh, bro. Do you give this a skim and hit approve, hoping it won't destroy prod before EOD? Or do you go through the 10 commandments for the perfect code review and get promoted to senior before lunch? Today we are going over 10 things you should always do when reviewing code to achieve the most effective and least annoying review. Number 2 and number 10 are perhaps the most important ones, along with a crucial yet controversial honorable mention. Let's go ahead and get started, we have a special guest today, Julian, helping us out by reading these commandments. Thou shalt ensure readability, for confusing code is the devil's playground. If you have to reread the same change 4, 5, 6 times before you understand what it's doing, the readability should probably be improved. Or you're just a junior. Codes should be easy for others to understand. You should check for clear naming conventions, concise comments where needed, and functions that are easy to follow. If an entire feature has been built within one function, suggest splitting up the main blocks into separate functions to improve readability. If you can't follow what value each variable is holding throughout the code, suggest more descriptive names. But be careful, you might fall into nitpick territory when it comes to naming suggestions. If it gets the point across, don't waste time changing it. But we will cover nitpicking later on. Thou shalt consider performance and scalability, for slow code is an abomination. Moving on to more critical things, consider how changes will perform within the scope of the feature. Point out any potential performance bottlenecks or inefficient code. Focus on logic that could lead to slow execution or memory overuse. A very easy yet commonly overlooked improvement is to look out for early return or short circuit opportunities. For example, if you have a condition that checks between the result of a heavy function call and a simple boolean feature flag, you should always check for the feature flag first. You should always keep in mind the complexity of the proposed code. I know it's been years since algorithms and computation and your computer definitely has more than enough RAM to handle a cubic function, but it shouldn't have to. Your computer is fine, but your server will definitely pay for it. But this is mostly important for components that will handle lots of data. If it's handling a couple of objects at most, it likely isn't worth refactoring. Thou shalt stay within scope and not add unnecessary complexity. Keeping in mind the big picture is crucial for effective code reviews. Before commenting, make sure you fully understand the problem the author is solving. Read the ticket, take a look at the designs, and skim through the RFC. Avoid making suggestions that don't align with the purpose of the code. Sometimes we get excited about a feature and think of ways to make it better and better. These ideas might be good, but they are likely not within the scope of the author's ticket or product's vision. So let this PR go through and discuss the ideas with your team and add additional tickets if needed. Lastly, reviewers sometimes treat code reviews like an experiment, asking the author to use a new and exciting language feature or library. The author then has to research some library feature that was released last week, sift through documentation, and ultimately realize that the codebase isn't even on the latest version. So avoid doing that unless you can provide the necessary code yourself and outline significant benefits. Thou shalt check for edge cases, for the unexpected shall smite thee in production. While you should remain in scope, make sure you visit the scope border. Make sure that the code handles all potential edge cases with elegance. Look for scenarios that the author might have missed, such as empty data, input validation, error handling, etc, etc, anything involving empty arrays, zeros, null, and missing data. Thou shalt not forget test coverage, for untested code is a sin in the eyes of QA. What better way to stop edge cases and other critical issues in their tracks than automated testing? Probably many other ways, but tests are crucial if you're contributing to a large piece of software. Everyone's making changes, and tests ensure that future changes do not break the current functionality. As such, review whether the code has adequate testing coverage, particularly for important blocks. Ensure that the tests are comprehensive and well-structured, and that they're actually useful. 
testing the same branch of functionality over and over is not beneficial. Make sure each test is targeting a specific and unique case or functionality. Lastly, lastly, suggest testing for code that is essential to the flow of the application. That means do not ask the poor author to write tests for a color change. Thou shalt seek out repetitive code and banish it from the code base. While you're sifting through the code doing some white box testing, look out for duplicated chunks of code. Suggest ways to refactor or abstract repetitive code to improve maintainability and performance. I've improved the performance of countless features with one simple trick. If the same intensive function is being called in numerous places with the same input, you should store the result of the function early on and reuse the result. Just make sure the result isn't expected to change at different places. If the same block of logic is copy pasted throughout multiple files, you should probably extract it to a separate function and call that instead. Doing so, you will only have to change one block of code rather than 10 when you'll inevitably have to change a feature because management changes their minds. Thou shalt not nitpick, lest ye be smited by thine own pet peeves. It's never that deep, don't leave comments for trivial subjective things like personal formatting preferences. You're not a linter, it's likely you will never see this code again, so do not let personal preferences get in the way of your team's velocity. Also, if you notice testing artifacts like commented code or console logs, keep the comments short, throw up the eyes emoji, the author just for gore. Thou shalt provide constructive feedback and sing praises of good code. We have gone through some specific examples so far, but you can apply this next one to every comment you'll leave on code reviews throughout your career. As the author, it's important not to feel defensive about reviews. After all, feedback helps you grow and you still get paid either way. On the other hand, as a reviewer, it's your responsibility to ensure that feedback is constructive and doesn't come across as harsh. Try framing your comments as suggestions rather than commands. For example, consider refactoring this function for clarity, smiley face, is better than this function is written poorly, thumbs down. Furthermore, acknowledge what the developer did well, not just what needs to be fixed. A little positive reinforcement here and there can go a long way in keeping morale high. Thou shalt encourage discussion, for two minds are mightier than one. Code reviews should be collaborative. Encourage the author to ask questions and explain your reasoning behind suggestions to foster mutual learning and communication. If you have serious concerns about the functionality being added, you should take the discussion off of the PR. It's a lot easier to discuss complex features in a voice or text chat rather than writing a wall of cascading text on a PR with the awkward delayed back and forth. Once you reach a conclusion, you can make a brief summary note on the PR for other reviewers so everyone's on the same page. This also means you gotta stay responsive after providing feedback or requesting changes. There's nothing more frustrating than a reviewer who bombards a PR with comments and then disappears for three days. Thou shalt not block changes over minor issues, for perfection is a false idol. Small issues like variable naming or minor styling tweaks shouldn't hold up a merge. You should differentiate between essential fixes and things that can be adjusted later. I'm so sorry, but not all of your suggestions are worthy. And if you recognize this, mention that a suggestion is not a blocker and that it's left to the author to decide. Perhaps you can even create a tech deck card to address it later. In general, make it easy for the author to say no when it really isn't a big deal. And there we have it, the 10 code review commandments to keep in mind when reviewing code to be as effective as possible. Apply these tips on your next review and let me know how it goes. And before we part ways, we have time for one last reminder, a controversial one. It doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes good enough is sufficient for the immediate needs of the project and the company. Before you dislike the video, I know how that sounds. No passion, no dedication. However, in an industry that demands speedy releases, you sometimes have to tell your inner programmer wolf to just let it slide. Also, tech debt is job stability. Make some more tech debt, who cares?
I'll have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number seven, two number 45s, one with cheese, and a large soda. Oh, that's insulting. 